Earth got a new moon, and here's what to expect. This is on the conversation by David Rothery, professor of planetary geoscience at the Open University. The Minor Planet Center has just announced that the Earth has been orbited by a second moon for the past three years or so. Let me laugh. <laughs> what? I can't believe this. We have a second moon. Yes, for the past three years or so. But while excitement about the discovery is growing, underlined, is growing, it's important to keep in mind that this moon is not an, as impressive as our main satellite. It's extremely faint. It's estimated to be only between one and six meters across and won't be with us for much longer, he says. The body was first spotted by U.S. astronomers Theodore Fruin and Caspar Wierschoss. I'm sure I'm not pronouncing that right. He, they were using a 1.52 meter, that's a 60 inch telescope at Mount Lemon Observatory near Tucson, Arizona, Arizona on February 15th. And uh, this article is just, uh, when is the date on this? Anyway, it's today on, yeah, February 26th. So they discovered this, uh, they saw it through the telescope about nine days ago. Yeah, nine days before, okay? So subsequent observations enabled its orbit to be calculated. And at 22.53 universal time, February 25th, that's two days ago, the Minor Planet Center announced the discovery, designating it as 220 CD, and confirmed that it is temporarily bound to our Earth. The object, 220 CD, is essentially just a tiny member of a class of asteroids whose orbits cross the Earth's orbit. Occasionally, they come near or collide with the Earth, but in this case, a collision would not have been a catastrophe for us because 220 CD is so small that it would have broken up into the atmosphere before reaching the ground. But instead of colliding with our planet, however, the initial approach of 220 CD towards the Earth meant that it was captured into orbit at a somewhat greater distance than our much larger par paramount moon. So-called mini-moons like this one come and go, and 220 CD is probably already on its final loop before breaking free. One study suggests that at any one time, the Earth is likely to be accompanied by at least one temporary mini-moon greater than one meter in size that makes at least one loop around the Earth before escaping. None of these stays long because gravitational tugs from our much larger permanent moon and the Sun make their orbits unusual. After being captured, they typically orbit the Earth for no more than a few years before breaking free to reclaim an independent orbit about the Sun. And hard to predict. Once a mini-moon has been discovered, its orbit is impossible to predict exactly because bodies this small are pushed perceptibly by the Sun's radiation, and we know too little about their sizes, shapes, and reflectivity to calculate the resulting effect. A previous visitor designated 2006 HR made four, uh, made four orbital loops around the Earth between September 2006 and June 2007 before proceeding on its way. By now, we'll have traveled to the far side of the Sun, and, but we'll pass closer to the Earth again in the year 2028. Another, other claimed moons of the Earth are asteroids whose orbital period about the Sun averages out to exactly one year. So while they appear to have a relationship with Earth, they are actually just orbiting the Sun in company with, but independently of, the Earth. These are known as quasi-satellites of the Earth. One of those 1991 VG seems to have made at least one genuine orbit of the Earth in 1992 and could well do so again in the future. So, while 2020 CD is an interesting new discovery, don't expect a catastrophic collision or extra moonlight from that evening stroll. Nevertheless, for a while at least, our main moon has a very tiny cousin. This is on The Conversation.
If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.